Good uh, afternoon, everybody. It's, uh, uh, it's nice to be here in Reykjavik. I haven't been here since 2006 when I worked for Nifka Nordic Institute for Contemporary Arts. And I hope that in the future I have it's, uh, again it's, uh, more reasons to come to Iceland and to Reykjavik. And this is a great initiative to it's get its Nordic actors together. My Norwegian uh, colleague it said that uh, she's here to replace Marta Kutsma from Oka. Unfortunately, I don't know who I am replacing here today. And that tells something about it's the situation in the field of contemporary arts in Finland at the moment. As Carlotta said that um, I worked earlier as a curator for Frame Finnish Fund for Art Exchange, but there's no curator at the Frame at the moment. There's no director at the Frame uh, at the moment. Yes, there's an artistic director who was appointed at the beginning of September to curate the Venice Biennale. Otherwise, nobody knows if there will be frame at the beginning of January or not, or if there will be something else replacing frame. So uh, this has been the situation uh, when it comes to frame for a year and a half for Finland now. And um, of course, it's, uh, it's again the field of the arts, especially artists uh, who are facing this situation because frame has worked as, as a mediator between the international art scene and the Finnish art scene. It's uh, linking Finnish artists uh, abroad, sending them to residencies, among other things. But anyway, it's possible to apply for grants if you work with Finnish artists from frame until end of December. So the grant program is running, so it says you can contact frame. And after that, please follow. It says if this website will exist in early January or not. I hope so, because I have witnessed many institutions to be closed down. It's for no good reason, and I hope that it's not going to happen to frame in Finland. So it is thinking, it's, uh, thinking about the topics which are heated in Finland. It's uh, certainly uh, closing down. It's Something which has created debate. Its uh, artists have made appeals, started its Facebook uh, book groups. It's uh, to uh, to save frame. But interesting thing is that still it is on on the level of content. There hasn't been really discussion that okay, what's the best model for the field of the arts? And that's uh, that's typical. It is in Finland. Finland is a consensus society. It's not so easy to really it is approach situation with when it comes to its. Uh, burning issues in the field of contemporary arts and also to get the voice of, of alternative or progressive it's a spaces into public media. Uh, last, it's a spring, another topic which has been discussed in Finland in the field of visual arts is the situation. Let's see if the net connection works or not. It worked in this right earlier. was this institution, Kiasma Museum of Contemporary Art in, in Finland. And uh, last spring, it's, uh, the director position was announced in Kiasma. And uh, in Finland, you have to it's speak it's uh, Finnish and Swedish in order to work in the state institutions. But this time, somebody, it's outside of Finland, it's a uh, director of Vitte de Viet, applied for a job. And that triggered the discussion in, in, an, in a healthy way also about the exhibition policy it's of Kiasma and, and also it's the situation of contemporary art in Finland. And uh, one topic also which has been raised today is the relation between mainstream art institutions and alternative scene and progressive scene. And uh, lately, it is Kiasma's exhibition policy has been something which has been, it's kind of surprising, let's put it that way. One of the last exhibitions there was an exhibition by Ilya Klasunov, who is a portrait painter, basically who has painted Russian, its politicians like, like uh, Putin and in Finland, Kekkonen and so on, and who is actually unfortunately openly fascist. So I hope that the situation in <laughs> Kiasma will change now. There's a new director. There's all, there's hope. She's opening up discussions. So I think that it's basically 
Instead of uh, talking about progressive cultural policies when it comes to official cultural policies in Finland and, and mainstream in institutions, we have rather lived regressive years in Finland. But I'm, I'm more optimistic now, and I want to be optimistic that something good it is, will come out of all of this. Third, it is uh, a big thing what happened in Finland was that uh, And Alto University is combined. Uh, let me come down. Alto University combined three big universities in Finland: University of Art and Design, Business School of Economics, and Helsinki Polytechnics, which also reflects uh, the policy tendencies in arts and cultural policy in Finland currently, namely its cultural export policies. And, and that's uh, arts and, and cultural policy and business policy, which was uh, launched in Finland it's, uh, in quite its extreme way in 2006, copying models, both it's from Austria and Great Britain. All the fields of arts also created, they export its strategies. And uh, just to put it in a nutshell, the most problematic thing was that that, that was too much is one way. It's a uh, policy which was launched at the moment. It, it didn't it's include the idea of the exchange. It was mainly about its uh, exporting Finnish arts abroad, but not being hospitable it's, uh, in, in Finland. And uh, Aalto University is, is now the university which get more funding in Finland than all the other universities together. And of course, there's also a debate now, which is uh, what is the position between Fine Arts Academy and University of Art and Design. And one of the professors from the Aalto University said that it's, I hope that this is not like being in a Titanic and you understand what he meant by that. So it is a big amount of resources which is now invested to this university. And at the same time, the Fine Arts Academy is legitimizing its position, working with arts, uh, for, uh, it is using other principles. And in Finland, we have its, uh, one, its fi Fine Arts Academy. In Helsinki, it's, uh, it's university level, it's a uh, fine arts education place. But these are its current, it's big changes, it's in, in, in mainstream, it's uh, arts and, and cultural uh, scene in Finland. And there are also other people from Helsinki, Finland here, and also others, if you have questions or comments right away, please feel free to ask. Then it's, uh, I uh, introduce shortly, it's HIAP, Helsinki International Artist Program, where I work it's, uh, currently as a curator. And um, HIAP is an artist-run association. There has been much talk about its uh, artist-run uh, uh, spaces and also it's, uh, uh, the role of the self-organization. Also, uh, uh, the gentleman from the best party mentioned yesterday that, okay, that we are self-made. And that's one of the strengths in the field of arts, which is one of the oldest it's, uh, ways of organization actually in human race, and, and there's much power there. It's, uh, uh, HIAP has um, changed quite a lot it's during its uh, last one and a half years. HIAP was started it's in 1998 uh, to work it's, uh, as an international artist in residency program in Helsinki, and then it had three studios at the cable factory. But uh, last summer, after lobbying for three and a half years, HIAP got back its old NIFCA premises, NIFCA is uh, Nordic Institute for Contemporary Arts. Some of you might be familiar with NIFCA. NIFCA uh, was located, and now its HIAP studios are located on the fortress island of Suomenlinna, which is 15 minutes uh, ferry trip uh, from the mainland. And uh, we have five uh, studios there, four guest rooms, and a gallery space. And as such, its facilities are, of course, not the main thing. The main thing is that how do you actually use those facilities also in the current its, uh, situation in uh, Finland. I, I read you, I just take my paper. Oh, sorry that I'm, I'll uh, read you, it is a short, short, it's a, 
text. Uh, oh, it is uh, extract from my speech. It's in Kumu Museum. I gave it um, after a uh, crisis of frame and, and after Hayab had got it, uh, its premises back, which summarizes it's in many ways also things which has been discussed here today and yesterday as well. The bubble has burst after the high watermark of short-termist thinking in art as much as in economics and politics. We can reimagine our place in a wider history. The role of the independent intelligentsia has been steadily eroded. The autonomous engaged intellectual of the post-war period, such as Solzhenitsyn Sartre, was replaced by a hegemonic postmodern politics of surface, such as Warhol, Kuhns, etc., and a random cannibalization of styles which claim to be uh, ideological. Even more recently, many artists, curators, critics, and academics became further functionalized in practice to justify their existence and pigeonholed according to profession. We now are in the midst of new wave of privatization of their creativity. Think tanks, just as museums, are more often corporate sponsored and lobbies uh, dominate political thought in Washington and increasingly in Brussels. In the EU, universities and art academies are being bureaucratized and functionalized by the Bologna process as a part of the wider Lisbon strategy, which orients society and culture towards serving the economy. The new university law was also passed in Finland, so universities are no longer autonomic in Finland. The world is currently in a state of deep market crisis. Finally, after declaring the end of has happily become unfashionable, it has become reality. Following 1989 and 2009, we live in the reign of freely existing postisms. Post-communism and post-neoliberal models are now a practical necessity. What is stra uh, strange is that alternative models, until recently deemed impossible, not only are available, but have been successfully implemented in the past. And there I'm talking about uh, self-organizing and, and artist-run initiatives. And also what we decided to do with the higher, because in, in Finland, it's uh, basically, there, there are also, it's, uh, uh, there's quite a, it's a strong, it's artist-run tradition. It's, it's another question that how progressive those places are, but there are artist-run places which has been running for it's quite a while, like it's Moore Association from, from the late 80s, and they have remained, and they have somehow managed to also, it's kept themselves going despite of the economical economical difficulties. So what, what we uh, do is that, that we have a really tight it's, uh, local network it's, uh, with uh, uh, different artist-run uh, places. And I introduce to you now it is shortly to the latest is emerging and uh, perhaps it's also progressive places. That's, that's a difficult question always. What is progressive and what is not progressive? I don't know either if Hayab is progressive at least not yet, we are just getting started. Uh, all, all, all in all that there are, it's uh, quite a uh, few, it is new, it's uh, artists in residency places which has started in Finland and one of them it is called it's uh, Mustarinta which is in eastern Finland and which is following is the idea of Black Mountain College. It is open both for the Finnish artists and international artists for thinkers, it's, uh, researchers, philosophies, it has its own gallery space and it's slowly developing its policies and we also it's between Hayab and, and Mustarinta we have collaboration and, and our artists uh, can stay in both places. And I think that is altogether, it's one, it's tendency in Finland is that also after, uh, after the new university law was, uh, was launched that it's Mustarinta is not the only place where it's uh, artists and thinkers are thinking about alternative ways of, of education and knowledge production. Uh, we, all, we just heard some examples from, from Sweden, it's uh, from Women's University. Mustarinta is uh, one example. Other example is something called uh, molecular.
this picture is uh, from the workshop they just uh, organized in the uh, gallery Augusta on, on Suomen Linna. Uh, I uh, read you, it's a shortly, it's a declaration of the okay, molecular organization. Molecular organization is a group of losers, opportunists, sad figures and dark princesses who try to get together to think and develop tools for the organization of our impossible community, the fragile community that continuously uh, oscillates from a partial, a partial success to a uh, nascent failure that does not really exist or at least threatens all the time to collapse and turn to the potentiality of cooperation into vicious violence. We don't march or feel uh, uh, much uh, solidarity. We have difficulties in getting up from bed. We are the future of cooperation. One of the key ideas we are now working on is the Robin Hood Investment Fund of the Precariat a minor asset management cooperative developed based on our analysis of the uh, imitative nature of the financial market. Robin Hood is a little bit like a women's, uh, women's banks in Asia and Latin America, but updating the operation into conditions of the financial economy of cognitive capitalism. So uh, basically there are this kind of it's the networks and, and group emerging. There's also a uh, couple of more of them, but it's the ideas are similar to self-organize, just think, initiate, and have its uh, own uh, academies going on. There's also something called the new nomadic academy, which was launched, launched in 2009. So we also collaborate and uh, develop its, these ideas uh, together uh, with these actors. And I think that it is also in, the, uh, in Finnish, it's alternative or progressive scene, if we want to it's, uh, call it so. It's not uh, necessarily, it's um, kind of permanent. It's gallery spaces or places are, are not the ones where the debates take place. It's more in festivals, it's more in events. For example, right now in Helsinki, there is a festival uh, going on called Lens Politica, which was started five years ago, which is a festival it's, uh, for alternative uh, political video art and film, uh, film art, an international one, which also it's, uh, have uh, always it's, it's an exhibition. This year the exhibition is uh, deconstructing the idea of nationalism. Uh, and it's taking place in the Fafa Gallery. Uh, Finnish Fine Arts Academy has two different galleries. I'll show you, it's a short uh, uh, trailer film introducing the idea of Lens Political Festival. The Lens Politica, it's festival this year, there are many debates, it's uh, all together, it's, it's uh, what truth means, it's uh, in, uh, in kind of, it's uh, in visual images and uh, what it means in the journalism and, and so on. But anyway, it's also, it's the festival, it's, which is really refreshing and well attended. Another festival which is already rather uh, established one, it's a festival called uh, Pixel Egg Festival, Pixel Ähkö Festival. Okay, I have three minutes, so I have to be really short. But that's also one, it's really a network uh, model that it doesn't only take place in Helsinki, it takes place in, in Dakar, in Paris, in, in really many it's different it's, uh, localities uh, globally. And I think that it's also this kind of alternative progressive ideas, it's, they are exactly becoming more, it's like an intervention, and there is also a possibility just to intervene to mainstream institutions and try to create dialogue. She also, like Pixel Lake Festival has, for example, done in, in uh, Kiasma for some years. Next year it, it will be mainly it is on Suomen Linna. But I think it's, uh, that, that's really important scene. I'll show you shortly. There are alternative it's, uh, galleries, young emerging spaces uh, in Helsinki, which has got started uh, during its last... Uh, 
one or two years. I'll show you a, a map of them so you'll get an idea of those galleries. which is an alternative initiative started by the collective of young artists and the word collective is also coming more, and more back to alternative and emerging art scene in, in Finland. And basically it's also Oksasenkatu 11, it consists of 10 artists and they also now they are starting its artist in residency work uh, in the same way as a couple of other its alternative spaces. And in Finland, the one reason for its uh, young emergent galleries to have its, uh, why they have an interest in artists in residence is in, in funding in Finland because it's really difficult to get funding to invite and, and show its uh, international artists in the Finnish art scene. There, there are gallery rents for artists and Finnish artists can apply for funding from foundations and from the Arts Council to organize exhibition, but the international artists can't. So Finnish artists are not that often uh, contextualized in, in the international art scene. And that is one uh, structural problem in the Finnish art scene. That also it's this kind of initiatives, they easily stay really it's local and there are no com comparisons in the international art scene. And it's uh, therefore, it's this altogether there is a generation of, of Finnish artists also uh, who are now it's 35, 40, who are internationally it's quite well linked and located and that's must, must actually due to international artists in residencies abroad. That's uh, also, it's, uh, you see it also in the Finnish contemporary art production that many themes, many works, they have been done it's in residencies. And those artists and individuals, they bring their impulses back in Finland they often it's live both in Helsinki, in Paris, in Berlin, in Helsinki. For example, it's just now there's an exhibition by artist Anu Pennanen who produced her latest piece. It's in, in Paris, in the residency place 104. It's, uh, she was there for a couple of years. Now she's back in Helsinki, organized her exhibition. Also, it's really important it's for the internationalization of the Finnish uh, contemporary artists for that generation. Uh, where the work uh, was the workshop practice which was started in, in the Finance Academy by Mika Hannula, rector, the director of the Finance Academy at the time. That its uh, artist uh, got an experience to its uh, work internationally, also work site-specific or not site-specific, but you see it in, in that generation and their, art, uh, their artistic practice. And uh, that is, this kind of tendency is uh, luckily continuing also in the Fine Arts Academy in Finland. Because I think it's, it's not often it's, uh, this internationality or transnationality is quite different in, in local art scenes. So it's more that it's, there are individuals who mediate these scenes together. And one weakness or structural weakness in the Finnish contemporary arts is that, like I, I suppose in other Nordic countries, that there are really uh, little resources for freelance curators, which means that exhibitions in, in uh, artist-run spaces, other gallery spaces, they are really seldomly curated, curated. There are not many curators involved in activities, and there are, there's not a, a, there are not possibilities for freelance curators to get grants to work work with artists. There's now a new initiative. It's in Finland. It was started two years ago. Finnish it's a curators association who is also trying to create a debate from uh, this is existing uh, structural problem in Finnish art scene. And especially now when frame is uh, not functioning effectively, there are not so many it's international curators or critics or thinkers coming to Finland through its state channels. And that's the reason these kind of initiatives like Pixel Lake, uh, Pixel Lake Academy or something high up started called High Up Talks, which uh, brings international thinkers, critics, curators to Finnish art scene, to meet artists, go to its uh, local self-organized places, artist-run spaces, is even of more crucial importance because that's not mediated by state institutions at the time. And I think that's extremely important that that kind of activity will continue for the uh, younger generations uh, in, uh, uh, in Finland as well. I think I have used 
already it's too much time. <laughs>